okay so but as you might be knowing that the vedic people okay they came from the northwest of india and uh, when they came into india their work is what sir they were essentially pastoralist people because of the nature of their work okay so these people they never used to reside at the same place for extended period of time sir okay because of this reason the pastoralists are always okay a migrating group of people okay so they are always a migrating group of people and they keep moving from one place to another sir so they are never statically present at one place <laughs> naturally when you have a migrating group of people the important thing about a migrating group of people is they never construct anything which survives for the future sir okay they will have very weak structures okay temporary homes they will construct okay that too they are made of reed reed means grass okay or some kind of mud say okay with the help of some mud they used to make their houses and none of these houses have survived till date sir is it clear so that is the reason why we don't know about the vedic aryan settlements where they were present where they moved around we only know it from the point of view of their writings that is rigvedas in fact the vedic period is considered to be a blank slate in indian history with respect to archaeology sir archaeologically we don't know about any aryans or their migration the only evidence we get about their migration and their settlement in india it comes from their literature that is rigvedas sir samajh mein aaya because they did not construct anything which lasts permanently their houses are very weak and temporary okay these are called as mud and reed houses and they did not survive sir and okay so theek hai un logon ka their secular architecture did not survive then what about their religious structures sir so what religious structures usually the vedic aryans constructed sir okay what are the important religious structures for vedic aryans huh so fire pits yes okay their main important okay so construction is upa or agnasthal sir okay upa or agnasthal but the thing is the problem with this upa and agnasthal is also that these are also temporary structures right so during the sacrifice you will construct them then after that you are going to dismantle them you are not going to keep them permanently like temples because of which reason the upas also did not survive sir <clears throat> then one more thing is during the vedic period okay some aryans they used to resort to this uh, method of cremation after the death of the person okay but many others also used to believe in the concept of burial sir okay burial also many people used to bury their dead people too and on the places where we find some aryan burials at the same place whenever a burial is made automatically you have to understand that it will create a bomb so some burial mounds were present in some places in some archaeological sites so what happens is where the burial is made there is a, there is a small mound so this way we find some burial mounds sir is it clear then along with that one more important structure for the vedic aryans is see however low level the civilization might be okay however low level the civilization might be however poor in civil engineering they might be one important source okay for any vedic aryan settlement or one important thing which is necessary for any people to live at any place is water right yes or no you are making a settlement so you will try to make settlement nearby to a water source okay but sometimes the water source is not nearby so but you are making a settlement so when you are making a settlement what these people used to do is in order to store the water which has been brought they used to construct things which are called as ring wells okay ring wells is a <coughs> structure which has been constructed during the vedic period and many of these ring wells are present even today sir and ring well means what so you might have seen i'll show one image sir of ring wells and then this is a ring well sir this is a ring well Are you understanding this? What they did is they made pots in circular shape, sir, without top or bottom, and they started placing one top of one pot on top of the other, and this way this will create a water storage structure, right? So much matter, you. So these are the ring wells, and these are the only surviving things from the Vedic period, sir. So much matter, you. So what did survive? Ring well survived. Some burial mounds survived. Okay, but the houses did not survive. The religious structures also did not survive. so this is the archaeological evidence or architectural evidence from the vedic period in india sir samajh mein aaya aapko then after that the next phase in history is the age of mahajanapadas that is also called as the age of buddha right yes so 
in fact the literature of the period it talks about large cities being constructed during the age of mahajanpada sir large palaces being constructed huge fort walls being constructed this this way literature talks about uh, enormous size of cities and palaces being present during the age of mahajanpadas but unfortunately <coughs> most of these palaces and fort walls they have been constructed with the help of wood sir okay or they might be, have been constructed on the basis of sun dried bricks so because of these two factors none of these structures have survived till date sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko so buddhist literature talks about kapilavastu being a major city rajgriha being a major city but we don't find any archaeological evidence from there because most of the structures were made in okay impermanent materials like wood and okay so what uh, the sun dried bricks are baked bricks are always strong sun dried bricks are always weak sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko so this way they constructed with sun dried bricks and wood because of which reason from this period also archaeologically this period is also almost a blank period except for some ring wells present during the age of mahajanpada sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko yes so but the thing is apart from the literary evidence one more important evidence for architecture of this period is uh, we have a very famous stupa at a place which is called as sanchi sir and on the outer walls of this sanchi stupa what happened is uh, numerous sculptures have been made sir and of these sculptures one sculpture was made of a city samajh lijiye sculpture means okay very <clears throat> i'll show you that sculpture too not there in the handout but okay so this is the sculpture which has been made on sorry on the sanchi torana sir can you see this sir okay so it in fact shows a city fort wall okay in fact in order to get more clarity what happened is some historians have reconstructed the image which is present on sculpture into a painting sir this is how the city of rajgriha used to look like but the problem is all the constructions in the city are wood or sun dried bricks because of which none of them survived till date sir okay just for your visualization i am showing this this is how the city used to look like multi storied buildings fort walls okay roads were okay the uh, processions of elephants torana at the start okay then compound walls are also there so this way the city was there but the, unfortunately the thing is none of these evidences have survived sir is it clear okay the only evidence which survives from this period is <clears throat> we get some stone platforms which are upraised okay and on these stone platforms the wooden structures were constructed sir the wooden structure is gone now what we have only we have the stone platforms sir and these stone platforms are found at two place it is not given there please write it down sir so these stone platforms you write one statement in the age of mahajanapadas you write one statement sir in the age of mahajanapadas most of the structures in the age of mahajanpadas most of the structures are constructed in the age of mahajanpadas most of the structures are constructed with wood or with wood or sun dried bricks sir sun dried bricks sun dried bricks sun dried bricks because of which because of which none of them have survived <coughs> none of them have survived but none of them have survived but we get a sculptural reference but we get a sculptural reference to the city of rajgriha to the city of rajgriha on the walls of on the walls of sanchi stupa and the walls of sanchi stupa sanchi stupa and we are also left with and we are also left with two large stone platforms two large stone platforms number 1 gositarma monastery you write it down gositarma monastery at kaushambi write it sir gositarma monastery at kaushambi and vishwakarma 
Bihara at Rajagriha. Two things are surviving, sir. One is Vishwakarma Vihara, which is present at Rajagriha. And the second one is this Gosidharma Monastery, which is present in Kaushal. Okay, so this can also be asked as a prelims question, right? They are upraised platform, that's it. Okay, so this upper wooden structure, tha, wo chala gaya, so platform, bach gaya, sir, bas. is it fine? Okay, so now the next one is, okay, after the Vedic and the age of Buddha, the next age for our study is a very important age from the point of view of architecture and this age is known as the Mauryan age, sir. So, Mauryan age, so in Mauryan age itself, we will study about cave architecture, okay, then along with that, we will also study about stupa architecture and along with the stupa architecture, we will also study about the earliest temples of India also, we will study in the Mauryan age itself, sir. This is a very important period for us with respect to architecture and sculpture too, primarily the reason being for the first time, okay, after the Indus Valley civilization, people started constructing, okay, structures in a more permanent material like stones. So, much more, eh? so earlier many structures were being built, but they were being built in perishable materials. But Mauryan age, it is considered to be the start of stone tradition in India, okay, primarily because the Mauryans had a large impact, enormous resources and money they had, yes. So, because of these resources and money, these people, they started constructing their houses, okay, not in uh, perishable material, but in stone, sir. And of the Mauryan structures that are present, there are one, number one is, there are many secular structures of the Mauryan age. Then along with the secular structures, there were numerous other, okay, religious structures of the Mauryan age, sir. I am not talking here about the Ashokan pillars. Ashokan pillars form part of sculpture, but not architecture. So, much matter, aapko? so because pillar is it part of any building, sir? Are Ashokan pillars part of any building? They are stand alone pillars, they are sculptures, sir. So, much matter, aapko? so building is separate. So, Ashokan period, pe, so there is number one, first and foremost, there is secular architecture, and in the secular architecture, we find some secular architecture from the Mauryan period at the place where Patliputra is present today. Okay, and in Patliputra, nearby to Patliputra, there are two small villages, sir. One is Bulandi Bagh and the second one is Kumarhar, sir. Kumarhar is one, Bulandi Bagh is the second one and at Kumarhar, which is just on the outskirts of Patliputra, okay, or Patna of today, what we do is, we find a large assembly hall at Kumarhar, sir. This assembly hall is also sometimes called as palace, okay, and this uh, is one surviving evidence from the Mauryan age, sir. Okay, but the unfortunate thing about this palace is, uh, the thing is, this palace has been mentioned by him, Okay, many foreign travelers to India, sir. In fact, Megasthenes, when he visited India, he called it as Chandragupta Maurya's palace. Then later day, Fahian came to India during Guptan period. And during Guptan period also, this palace was intact. In fact, Fahian was shocked to look at the palace of Ashoka Maurya. And he also said that this palace is not constructed by human beings, but is constructed by some form of divinity. He said this statement, bola, sir. He said this palace. Ko dekhe. Okay, but unfortunately, the problem is during the Islamic invasion, this structure has been completely razed to the ground, sir. Okay, completely razed to the ground. But the only archaeological remaining or surviving evidence for us is we have a raised platform in Kumarhar, sir. Okay, so platform need not be destroyed. There is a reason why platform was left intact. Then along with platform, some other things that are left behind are they constructed the entire building with okay stone pillars, sir. Of these stone pillars, some stone pillars have survived and they were found in the place which is nearby to the raised platform, sir. And on the platform, we find numerous holes, okay, in order to place these pillars, sir. So much matter, aapko? And the pillars on the top also have, okay, an, uh, an extension which shows that on the top of the pillar also, there were some animal images which were extending from the top of the pillar, sir. So much matter, aapko? So, in fact, this was very, very similar to a palace which was very famous in Middle East, which is known as the Persopolis Palace and that inspired Ashoka Maurya to construct a similar palace in India and it used to have, okay, stone pillars and along with that I, animal images on the top of the pillar as capital. So, this way the pillars were present, but today we have a very large pillar, but the top images have been completely destroyed and the pillars are also not standing at place and the roof is also lost. And this palace is called as the famous Kumarahar Palace. And this palace was constructed with nearly 500 pillars, sir. 
समझ में आपको सो फाइन पिलर कैपिटल पिलर पैलेस वॉज प्रेजेंट दिस इज कुमार हर पैलेस सर then apart from the kumarhar palace the second evidence which comes from the mauryan age secular architecture is okay at this place which is called as bulandibagh and at bulandibagh what happens is we find okay the remains of a charred okay wooden fort walls are wooden fort walls are there okay wooden fort walls if they are just like that then they will be eaten away by termites sir. but what happen is in bulandibagh luckily one part of the fort wall it has been burnt sir because during some war or attack it has been burnt and whenever any wooden thing is burnt then automatically it will become like coal and a no termite will touch it sir so because of which reason this burnt okay bulandibagh fortification wall it has been surviving and this fortification wall it shows that the wall had bastions sir bastions i have shown earlier yaad hai na aapko bastions tha and at regular intervals on this wall we had towers which are called as watch towers in order to see where the enemy is coming from sir is it clear this is known as the bulandibagh fort wall and this is also surviving from patliputra these are the two secular evidences from this period sir samajh mein aaya aapko so then after this the next important architecture of the mauryan period is during the mauryan period i already told you that ashoka maurya re excavated the dead body of buddha then he cut it into 84000 pieces and he distributed it across the country and constructed on every piece of body part of buddha he constructed a stupa sir okay but the problem is the stupas which have been constructed by ashoka they were very crude stupas sir okay so they had just some okay so do you know about stupa okay can you enter a stupa can you enter a stupa is there any internal architecture for stupa sir stupa is a solid body sir okay you might have seen in dauli also dauli also you can actually do the projection around the stupa but you cannot enter into the stupa primarily because the stupa is a solid structure and it is a representation of the burial mount of buddha sir you cannot enter into the grave of a person right so similarly here also first they will place the burial, uh, this casket they will place sir which contains one or the other part of buddha then they will close it then they will place it at center then they will construct a rubble masonry stupa first sir rubble masonry means what they will pour as much as sand and stones onto this place this will create a large structure and on top of it what ashoka did is he used sun dried bricks in order to construct the stupas because of which reason most of ashoka's stupas they did not survive till date sir samajh mein aaya aapko this is the first religious structure of ashoka maurya and a more important religious structure of ashoka maurya is he is the one who first constructed a cave temple in india and this cave temple he constructed not for buddhist sir but for who did he construct ajivikas he constructed it for ajivikas because his father is a follower of ajivika sect so he constructed the first cave temple of india sir now we will discuss about the cave architecture so and what i will do is once i talk about the cave architecture of ashoka parallelly what i will do is i will finish off the entire cave architectural style of india sir okay across various periods where are the caves present so what kind of structures they have followed so before that let's try to understand okay what are the basic elements of a cave architecture let's try to understand sir okay because this has been asked as a question too and it is a important topic let's try to understand this usually a cave means what sir a cave is a rock hollowed structure is a cave sir okay they find a huge boulder or a mountain and they start carving the mountain from one end okay and they will hollow out the mountain and the interior okay you will find a cave sir समझ में आपको सो दिस इज द केव आर्किटेक्चर सर एंड वेन इट कम्स टू द केव आर्किटेक्चर ऑफ इंडिया ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस सर मेनी केव्स हैव बीन डग ओके इन द शेप ऑफ ए प्लान विच इज कॉल्ड एज अपल प्लान सर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज हाफ एलिप्स प्लान और ऑल्सो अपल प्लान ओके द स्पेलिंग फॉर दिस इज ए पी एस आई डी एल सर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज अपल प्लान एंड अलॉन्ग विद अपल प्लान सम स्टूपास और सम केव्स इन इंडिया They have been constructed in the format of a rectangle, sir. The interior it looks this way. Okay, then otherwise they also constructed some caves. Okay, which look like okay this kind of spherical shape. Also they constructed some caves, sir. Is it clear? Okay, so one is apsidal, second is rectangular. Sometimes square shape also they constructed, and spherical is the third shape, sir. Then along with this, the thing with Indian caves is the Indian caves sometimes they are single chambered, sir. This. Way. sometimes the cave can also be a multi chambered cave to sir and how can a cave be multi chambered cave first okay there will be a rectangular cave 
Then after the rectangular cave, at the end of this cave, they will construct one more okay, spherical shape of room, sir. Multi-chamber means multi-roomed caves we started constructing, sir. Samaj mahar aapko? So, single chamber, multi-chamber stupas, uh, sorry, caves we started constructing. Then along with the single and multi-chambered caves, one more important thing about the Indian cave architecture is, okay, slowly with the time, Indian architects, they started making caves, not only as a single storied caves, they also started constructing double storied and triple storied caves too, sir. Can you give any example of a double storied cave? Khandagiri is a double storied cave, right? Similarly, in Ellora in India, we find a cave which is a triple storied cave, sir, which can be accessible through, okay, steps and triple storied cave also is present at Ellora. This way, multi-store, multi-chambered rooms. So, this is the second important element of cave architecture in India, sir. Is it clear? Then the third thing is, so you have dug a cave, yes, so there should be an entrance for this cave, right? Usually most of the times what happens is the entrance for the cave, it will be on this side, sir. It means that the caves will be parallel to the mountain ridge. So much matter, you have entrance hoga or a parallel. Pura. Is it making sense? And sometimes what happens is the caves also will have entrance this way too, sir. Yes, side entrance is there, front entrance is also there, sir. All right. So, then apart from side and front entrance, two types of entrances are present. So, the thing is, when you see from a distance, you have to, first and foremost, you can't see what is inside. What you have to see, what is present at the entrance, only that thing you can see and perceive, right? Yes. So, for this purpose, what they did is, they started, okay, ornamentation of this entrance with very beautiful sculptures. And this decoration of the ornament is usually called, uh, sorry, decoration of the entrance is usually called as facades. First, mentally visualize. I will show the image for everything. Do not worry about it. Facade is what? Just the decoration of the entrance gateway is called as a facade. Sir. Is it clear? Then after that, what people did is, because the caves internally, they become very dark, right? Yes, because there is no light source here. Only entrance is there and the entrances are also usually very small. So, because of this reason, what they did is, they started constructing caves which have pillared porticos of their own self. Okay. So, can you give any example for a pillar, pillared portico cave? Cave should have first pillars, then after that the temple should start. Sir. Any pillared portico cave? Khandagiri is a pillared portico cave, sir. Have you seen it? Okay, first there is a pillared portico. Okay, and after that there will be the vihara where the uh, where the Jain monks used to sleep. So, pillared portico caves are the caves which contain at the entrance. Okay, pillar portico, so that there will be light into the cave and along with that there also will be a beautiful presence to the outside world if there is a pillar portico, sir. Samaj aapko? This is the second one. Then the third thing is, even after construction of the pillar portico also, if there is an inside chamber, the chamber will be completely dark, sir. Yes or no? Because of which reason what these people did is, apart from constructing a pillar portico, whenever the entrance is being built, Okay, let's suppose if the cave is a large cave in the inside, sir. So, they construct a pillar, so, sorry, they construct a entrance gateway and for the entrance gate, gateway on top, they construct a huge balcony which permits the light inside the cave, sir, light and air and this huge balcony which is constructed in order to permit light and air is called as Chandra Shala, sir. Chandra Shala is the balcony which is constructed on the top of the entrance. And this Chandrashala, it permits light and air into the cave, so that there will be more visibility within the cave is the idea here, sir. So, much matter aapko? So, bar ka a sub design karte. Okay, so first entrance, pillar portico, then Chandrashala. Okay, so these are the decorations which are done outside. But once you enter into the cave temple, there also you need to do some decorations. Okay, because Indian mindset is based on ornamentation. So, these people wanted to do ornamentation in the interior, sir. And for the interior ornamentation, First thing is, once you enter into the cave, if the cave has a flat roof, then it will not be visually very pleasing, sir. Okay, flat roof hai to utna dekhne mein utna achcha nahi So, that is the reason why what these people did is, inside the cave, rather than putting a flat roof, they started constructing a roof which came to be known as vaulted roof, sir. Vaulted roof is, okay, so this is also called as wagon vaulted roof. So, in trains, okay, you might have travelled in train, right? Yes. So, did you see the roof of the trine? Is it flat? It is curved, right? 
okay that is what roof style is called as barrel vaulted roof is the roof style sir usually huts also have this kind of roof right have you seen huts some traditional huts in india they have a curvilinear roof on top that curvilinear roof style is called as barrel vaulted roof sir and this is an imitation of okay the hermitages or the kutirs of sanyasis also usually have this kind of roof right kabhi koi sanyasi ka kutir dekha aapne so kutir to usually this barrel vaulted roof it has sir so in order to mimic the kutir these people also started constructing this kind of vaulted roof on top sir theek hai so vaulted roof top pe construct karte aap okay sahi chala theek hai ye problem nahi hai then the second thing is okay the room looks very empty sir and in order to decorate the room what they did is they started so let's suppose this is a upsidal planned okay cave let's suppose this is the entrance let's suppose samajh lijiye so what they do is okay they construct or they put up okay so pillars at a regular interval across the walls so that it can create a pradakshina path inside and the pillars are also highly ornamented pillars they will attach to here sir but do the pillars serve any purpose here sir pillars usual purpose is what to hold the roof but here the roof is what it is already having rock okay the roof will not fall but these pillars are constructed only for the sake of ornamentation and they don't serve any utilitarian purpose sir and on top of these pillars these people started placing okay some stick kind of things okay that also is made of stone and this looks like okay in a hut in order to hold the top you place sticks right exactly the same picture you are going to get if you go inside the structure sir samajh mein aaya aapko yes so you will have this barrel vaulted kind of roof which looks like a hut with a pillars of its own and this also creates a pradakshina path for the people who are entering into the cave sir and the caves are multiple kinds of caves are there one cave type is vihara cave so kandagiri is a vihara cave right yes so then apart from uh, the vihara caves there are also caves which are called as chaitya caves chaitya caves are the sacred places where meditation is usually done and in these chaitya caves usually what happens is at what one corner of the cave they will place a stupa sir and the stupa is also a stone stupa it will not have any relic of buddha but it just symbolizes buddhism samajh mein aa raha hai aapko ek end pe so they will place this kind of stupa to sir clear so did you get the mental picture of how the caves look like now i will show the photographs of the same thing sir okay, just now let's have a look at the caves okay so what is this entrance decoration entrance decoration is called facade right did you understand facade now yes so this is our famous khandagiri udaygiri caves sir did you understand the pillared portico concept now yes two storied cave also did you understand yes so this also has an ornamented facade right at the entrance can you see the entrances are being decorated yes so then after this uh, the next one is usually the caves used to look this way sir it means that on a mountain outcrop they are going to construct the caves in this way sir is it clear this all of them also have pillared portico sir then after pillared portico the next important thing is i'll show you one image sir which shows uh, so this is the chandrashala sir can you see the chandrashala this is the entrance this is the chandrashala light and air jaane ke liye can you see the entrance there this is the balcony sir then along with that see the facade how big it has become yes from a small facade to facade decoration it became enormous facade decoration sir okay so then after that i'll show you this is the barrel vaulted roof sir can you see it okay this image i'll show you okay from a close quarter sir can you see the pillared portico how it looks like no not pillared portico this is the interior pillars sir pradakshina path here sculpture and again there are pillars and at one end there is a stupa okay can you see the upsidal plan of this samajh mein aa raha hai aapko then after that okay if you see the pillars on top of the pillars also it looks like a hut structure right this is called as the barrel vaulted roof with the pillars sir did you understand the basic elements of a cave structure sir yes so these are the basic elements of a cave structure so this is how the caves are usually constructed sir every cave has a barrel vaulted roof see sir here also you have a barrel vaulted roof okay so this is a flat roof to cave sir some caves have flat roof some caves have barrel vaulted roof then apart from this 
Okay, so these are the important elements, sir. So here also there is a. Uh, can you see this pillar portico mandapa? Okay, so then apart from that there is an entrance for the cave. Yes. So these are some of the essential elements of a cave architectural style, sir. We have Buddhist chaityas, Buddhist viharas, and Jain basadis. And along with that, the earliest Hindu temples which are surviving in India today are also all cave temples. So much, my aapko? Yes. So and a cave architect, what he does? He starts from one end of the cave. Okay, and he carves and he hollows out the rock and he carves the rock in the interior, sir. So much, my aapko? And the same cave construction structures in India or the cave construction style in India. Later day, what happened is uh, during the time of Rashtrakutas. Okay, I'll just tell you one example. During the time of Rashtrakutas, so they constructed numerous caves at Ellora, sir. Okay, every cave, what was happening inside, it is brilliant. But from outside, it looks very dull. Okay, so whatever you do, okay, the inner brilliance you can't show outside, right? Yes. So that is when in Ellora, the architects of caves, what they did is suddenly they migrated to construction of a full-fledged temple, wherein rather than hollowing a rock, they started from rather than from the bottom of the rock, they started from the top of the rock and they planned it so intricately that they carved an entire mountain from top to bottom and this became the famous Kailasnath temple of India, sir. Okay, so what kind of planning is required for this, sir? Is it not going to be difficult if you make a single mistake, single planning mistake also, the entire structure will go waste. Okay, but without even a single deficiency in the entire structure, a mountain has been carved from top to bottom, okay, in Dravidian style of architecture in Deccan region and this temple is called as the famous Kailasnath temple of Deccan. Sir. So much matter, aapko? So this is very, very important. I will show the image of the Kailasnath temple too and Kailasnath temple Unlike the other temples in India, this is considered to be part of the cave architectural style, sir. Samaj Nishi. Okay, because this is carved, right? It is not considered to be like a temple which has been constructed from bottom to top. It is a carved temple. That is the reason why it is also part of the cave architectural style in India. So, can you see the temple's enormity, sir? It is a huge temple complex, sir. Okay, it has been constructed for Shiva as Kailasnath. Okay, but this temple shows a lot of tradition of Harihara, sir. Okay, because I told you that during Cholan period, there used to be conflict between Vaishnavites and Shaivites, right? In order to resolve this conflict, a new cult has been created, okay, in South and Deccan, which is called as Harihara cult, which includes both the aspects of Vishnu and Shiva in the temple complex. Okay, in this temple, if you go on one side, you find all the stories of Shiva. On the other side, if you go, you find the stories of Vishnu. Samaj my aapko? So, that is called as the Harihara cult. These people have followed the same thing, sir. So, more about this temple and structure, I will discuss <laughs> again separately. Now, let us see this, sir. Let us see the Mauryan age. We will start with the Mauryan age, sir. The first one is there is an assembly hall at Kumarahar, which is also called as palace. Okay, assembly hall or palace, Kumarahar. Platform and pillars remain. Okay, so there it is given. Megasthenes praises it. Megasthenes praises it and Fahia. You add his name also, sir. Fahia. Fahian also calls this temple. Fahian. You know the spelling of Fahian, right? So when did he come to India? During whose period did he come to India, sir? Fahian. Kabayatahu. Whose period don't tell the king name, at least tell the period. Gupta period. He came during the time of Chandragupta II. Okay, so the person who used to maintain Navaratnas at his court, that is Kalidasa's uh, pattern, during his period he has come to India, sir. Till that period this palace was served. So much my apko. Fahian also praises it. Okay, praises it. Okay, so then after that you see pillars are exquisite, but the structure is Okay, so it means that the top was wooden, sir. It was burnt down. Okay, top was wooden and it was burnt down. Pillars have holes for socket holes for iron dovels. It means that on top you have socket holes for the pillars, sir. So that they can hold on to a top structure. So then after that, circular wooden base is there and square bosses to hold sculpture at top. Please write that word. Square bosses at to hold sculpture at top. At top. 
just like Ashokan pillars are there, right? You visualize it this way, sir. The building used to be present in this way, where the entire structure had 500 Ashokan pillars. And every pillar on top, it had a unique structure of animals of its own, sir. So that is how the structure used to look like. So then, uh, pillars have holes for socket, holes for iron dowel, circle, wooden bases, square bosses to hold sculpture. There is projections from pillar at top. Projections from pillar at top. And there is also wooden fortification remains at Bulandibhag, sir. You remember Kumarhar and Bulandibhag, two places, names you remember, that's it. So, Bulandibhag, fortification, bastion is there. Here I told about bastion, right? Bastion is the ups and downs on the fort are called as bastions. Forts, watchtowers are there and moat is there, sir. Moat is that water channel. Okay, moat is the water channel. These are the four things which are present. Okay, so and... Uh, uh, at the same place, Kumarhar, there is a royal stable too. Assembly hall is there. We have talked about it. Antapura, there is palace is there and palace garden is also there. But we don't have any great evidences from here, sir. Making sense? Then after that, stupas, he constructed 84,000 stupas. But most of them are mud built mounds, sir. So much my apko? With sun dried bricks, right, sir. Mud built, built mounds with sun-dried bricks, sun-dried bricks, then next one is cave architecture of his and he started it with, okay, these caves which are called as Barabar caves, in bracket you write, Ajivika caves, Barabar caves are Ajivika caves, it is a Ajivika Vihara, okay, now see this cave architecture features, okay, first one is all of the caves are rock hollowed caves, sir. rock hollowed caves, single room or multi-chambered, some caves are stupa, some caves are chaitya, some caves are bihara kai, okay, there you write sir, some caves are jain basadis, some caves are jain basadis, jain basadi, hmm. basadi, b-a-s-a-d-i, jain basadis and some others are Hindu temples and some others are Hindu temples. Okay, Chaitya Vihara, I need not differentiate between them, right? Chaitya is a sacred spot. Okay, so Vihara is residence. Okay, so I have shown the question also to you. Then the, some are single storied and some are multi storied. So there you can write, okay, two storied cave at Khandagiri. Okay, so then Three storied cave at Elor, two storied cave at Khandagiri, and three storied cave at Elor. Okay, so there, there are rectangular caves, are there upsidal planned caves, are there circular caves, are there. I told about these three plans, right? So, you can, in the exam, you can, if you can draw a diagram, okay, a notational diagram of the cave, it would be very helpful for you, sir. Okay, just make one upsidal plan, point out the pillars where they are present. Samaj mein? Entrance dikana ek bar. Okay, waha pe facade lik lena. Okay, so barrel vaulted roof lik lena. Upsidal plan likna. So, aisa aapko, you can increase your marks by drawing a small notational diagram of a cave, sir. Okay? So, then after that, decorated pillars along the walls. I showed them, right? Then after that, ornamented facade. Facade means entrance decoration. Okay, facade means entrance decoration. And there used to be huge windows which are called as chandrashalas. Yes. Then there are pillared porticos and verandas. I have shown them. Yes. Then after that there is barrel vaulted roof with ribs. I have shown it, right? Okay. Vaulted roof means wagon roof. So much my hut structure. Okay. Hut structure. Then, okay. Stupa or images are placed at corners of the caves. Okay. Okay, if any question cave architecture, pe aaya to, this is the template, sir. Let's suppose tomorrow they ask question suddenly on the cave temples of Ajanta and Elora. Okay, so you don't know what specific caves are there. Okay, sab kisi ko pata nahi. But kya karna hai aapko? Ajanta caves are Buddhist caves. They have been patronized by, okay, the rulers of Vakatak dynasty. I told about it, if you remember. Vakatak dynasty bolke, waha pe pull stop. Then baad mein, okay, so what you have to write? You have to just write these things, sir. Vakatak, Vakatak dynasty. Okay, so Vakatak dynasty. Okay, so these caves, ke mein, aap likh sakte. same thing. Some are single storied, some are double storied. 
Okay, so you say facade is there, Chandrashala is there. So some have images at one corner. Okay, so the person will be impressed, sir, who is reading your answer. Okay, because this is a template. It works for every cave structure in India. This template works, sir. So much aapko? Yes. Now the thing is, where are these caves present in India? See, the thing is, which geographical region is more suitable for construction of cave temples, sir? Uh, the Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats are the places where you can construct the maximum number of caves, sir. Primarily because these mountains lend themselves very well in order to construct these cave temples, sir. And particularly in the Gangetic belt, it is very difficult to construct the caves because most of it is delta region and doesn't have many huge boulders of its own. Maybe some exceptions will be there here and there. But mostly you don't find in Gangetic belt any place this kind of mountain or stone structure, sir. You can have mountains. But mountains are not formed out of stones. The only exception for this is in the proper Gangetic plain in the Bihar region itself, you have one important mountain region which is called as the Barabar mountain region and there itself Ashoka has constructed the Ajivika caves. So much my aapko? Barabar Ajivika caves. Then after that, the next important caves in North India means I am including even Odisha also part of the Northern history. So Kandagiri Udayiri is also part of the North Indian cave construction style, sir. Okay, these are Jain caves. The earlier ones are Buddhist caves. Then after that, the third important cave is present in the Madhya Pradesh region, sir. Madhya Pradesh region also has some mountain ranges, okay, primarily because we have the Vindhya mountains there, right? Yes or no? That is the reason why those caves, those mountains also lend themselves for carving. And in the Vindhyan mountain range, we have two prominent caves, sir. One is Udaygiri caves and the second one is Bhag caves, sir. And the Udaygiri cave was constructed during the Guptan period. And the Udaygiri cave is a Hindu cave, which talks, which in fact is a temple of Varaha avatara of Vishnu, sir. Remember this, this is very important. I told you already in Madhya Pradesh region, Varaha avatara is very prominent, sir. So, historically also he was very prominent. So, Varaha Avatara was present in Madhya Pradesh. So, that is Udaygiri cave. Then after that, there is one more cave called Bhag cave. And this is also a Guptan cave. But this Guptan cave is dedicated to Buddhism, sir. And this cave is known for painting, sir. So, Liji. Okay. So, for the ornamentation, despite of doing all these things, people felt even then a sense of lack. So, what they did is they started painting the walls of the caves very beautifully, sir. Okay, about the paintings, I will talk later in Ajanta painting tradition. But just remember, Bag is a painting cave and it is a Buddhist cave which was drawn during the time of Guptas. Udaygiri is a Hindu cave, sir. Okay, this is not Khandagiri Udaygiri, this is a different Udaygiri of Madhya Pradesh. Then after that, if you come to Dakkan, in Dakkan region, we have enormous amount of caves, sir. And the cave structures, construction style in Deccan region, it is started by none other than the Satavana rulers of Deccan region, sir. Okay, Satavana rulers whose capital was at Amaravati, Dharani Kota. So, and Deccan region has numerous mountain ranges which lend themselves for carving. So, most of the caves are constructed in Deccan region, sir. And during the Satavana period, most of the caves are Buddhist caves, sir. So, the Satavana dynasty is very unique, primarily because the Satavana dynasty is a Hindu dynasty, sir. Samaj Nishi. Okay, and all the kings, they used to perform the Vedic sacrifices and they used to follow at the best, I mean, uh, they used to follow Hinduism, sir. Samaj Liji. They used to call themselves as Ek Brahman, sir, because of their patronage towards Hinduism. But the uniqueness of Satavana dynasty is uh, in the family, the kings are all Hindus, but the queens are all Buddhists. And all these caves in the Deccan region of Satavanas, they have been constructed not by the kings, but by the queens, sir. Queens' patronage led to construction of these caves, and these caves in Deccan region we have. Caves like, okay, see the names, Karle, okay, so then apart from that, read it out, huh? Bhaja, Karle, okay, so then, huh? Kanheri, okay, so all of these caves are Shatavana caves, you have to remember the names of the caves, okay, Panduleni is also there, no, no Panduleni, okay, so Karle, Bhaja, Kanheri, Nashik, Betsa, Pitalpura and Junar, sir. so these are the caves which are constructed during Shatavana period, no need to buy heart, sir, read them twice or thrice, you will automatically read. Remember, and all these caves are Buddhist, patronized by the Buddhist queens. Please write it down. All of these are Buddhist, constructed by the patronage of, constructed by the patronage of Buddhist queens, constructed by the patronage of Buddhist queens. 
Okay, so then after the Satavanas, okay, came the Vakatak sir, and the Vakatak's main contribution is in which region? Ajanta. Okay, Ajanta caves, paintings, all of them were done under the Vakataka patronage. And interestingly, the Vakataks are also again Brahmins. Okay, but they constructed Buddhist caves. So much may have So then after the Vakataks in Dakin region, further the cave construction style is continued by the Rashtrakuta sir. Okay, and the Rashtrakutas constructed caves at these places like Ellora is one. Okay, so Ellora is one important site for the Rashtrakutas sir. Then apart from the Rashtrakutas in the Dakin region, we also had people who are called as Chalukyas of Badami. So if you remember the chronology, I told about them. And the Chalukyas of Badami constructed cave temples at three places, sir. Aihole, Badami and Patadaka. Okay, so please write. Is it given there? Please write it now. Chalukyas, okay, so constructed caves at Aihole. A-I-H-O-L-E. Aihole, comma, Badami, Badami, comma, Patadaka. P A T T A Patta Dakal D A K A. Okay, Patta Dakal is the place name, sir. These are the three caves of uh, three important sites of caves of the Chalukyas of Badami, sir. Clear? So did I miss any caves? Then after that we have South, sir. In South, during the Palavan period, okay, caves were constructed, sir. And the Palavan caves are called as uh, what Mandapas. Okay, Mandapas they are called as, and the Mandapas were constructed at Mahabalipuram. Okay, which is a famous site for the Palavas of Kanchipuram. So, Balipuram may they have constructed these caves, sir. Then, apart from this, apart from the Palavas, there was one more ruling dynasty called Pandyas, and they constructed a very famous Jain cave, which is called as Sittanavasal, sir. See, the Palava caves are Hindu, whereas Sittanavasal is a Jain cave, sir. So much, may I? And Rashtrakutas and Chalukyas of Badami, they constructed caves for Hindus, Jains, and Buddhists for all three religions they have constructed, sir. Both Rashtrakutas and Chalukyas, they constructed caves for every religion. Okay, Ellora as a site, it has numerous cave temples, sir. In fact, nearly 24 caves are present. Okay, of these 24 caves, 8 were Hindu, 8 were uh, this uh, uh, Buddhist, and 8 were Jain, sir. Now, 23 caves, 7 were Jain. So, this was the distribution in Ellora. So, this way, multiple religions coexisted together in Ellora, sir. So, much may I have? Yes. So, this is the case with uh, these caves, sir. So, just have a look at them. So, if I missed any caves, I will. So, North Barabar caves, that is Ajivika, Udaygiri, Karnagiri caves, gave Jain, and they have been constructed during the time of Karvel. Okay. So, Karvel, and there is also one more cave called Rani Gumpha cave, and it contains the famous inscription of Karvela, right? Yes, Karvela's inscription is present there. Then, after that, Udaygiri, it has the Varaha caves. I told about it, right? Hindu caves, these are Hindu caves. Then Bhag caves has Rangamandap and this is Buddhist and both of them are constructed during the time of Gupta period, sir. So, you write Madhya Pradesh in bracket. MP. Then Dakin, Satavana, Skarle, Bhaja, Kanheri, Nashika, okay, Bedsa, Pitalkora and Junar. Then Vakataks, Buddhist, they constructed caves at Ajanta. Okay, sir. Then after that, Chalukyas and Rashtrakutas. They constructed Hindu, Jain, Buddhist caves, Ellora, Elephanta, and the places that I have talked about, Aihole, Badami, and Patadakal, sir. Where is this Elephanta located at? Any guess? Maharashtra, where? Elephanta. Ellora and Ajanta are located in Aurangabad. Okay, Elephanta is, in fact, a small island just outside of the city of Mumbai, sir. It is present within Mumbai. Okay, from Mumbai, you have to take a boat journey. It is an island. You know about it? Okay. This cave, Elephanta cave, you don't go. Okay, this is a very famous Shaivite cave, sir. Okay, Elephanta caves are, uh, yes, it is a very famous Shaivite cave. Okay, but the problem with this cave is the Portuguese came to India, right? I'll just tell a small story about this cave, sir. Okay, so, huh? They just did not keep business, sir. What they did is they destroyed most of the cave. And what they did is, the cave had numerous outside sculptures it had, sir. So, what they did is, they converted it into a firing range for themselves and they destroyed most of the stupas, sir. Firing range means what? Practice shooting. Okay. So, practice shooting and they destroyed most of the caves here, sir. 
okay and along with that this not just this sir goa is also a major site for cave architecture and along with that numerous temples were present in goa sir okay usually what happens is whenever construction of temples come we think of it as because of islamic invasion only but the portuguese did okay destruction of temples in a more brutal fashion than either delhi sultanate or mughal sir they razed numerous temples to the ground in order to forcefully convert the local population to christianity okay so this is very very important sir okay so now just have a look at this uh, elora and elephanta aihole badami and patatakal you have written south we have palava mandapas and sitana vasal it is pandyas and these caves are jain sir and palava mandapas are hindu write it down palava mandapas are hindu and they are present at mahabalipuram and this sitana vasal is the place and the cave is jain cave of pandyas sir okay so these are questions you put a double star mark nearby to this uh, slide sir because the questions come from this section only in prelims the questions come from this section which which cave whose patronage okay which religion so these questions are asked now just see this okay first one is uh, barabar cave so they are both chaityas and viharas of ajivikas they have polished walls and ceilings okay so because uh, mauryan period okay so the stones used to be polished in a very good fashion in fact the polish was such that the stones or the rocks used to become reflective sir that is called as mauryan polish you please highlight that word mauryan polish more about it i'll discuss in architecture oh, sorry sculpture have you seen any mauryan pillar sir animal on mauryan pillars so you know about the sarnath pillar right so have you ever seen the original image original image the stone looks like a mirror sir it is so reflective it means that they have fine tuned the rock in such a fashion that okay the light which is falling on the rock it reflects sir samajh mein aaya aapko if any surface is very smooth what happens light will reflect that is what is called as mauryan polish sir okay mauryan polish is present then it also contains barrel vaulted roof okay only about these caves we will see a little extensively sir then parallel to the wall of the rock not perpendicular i told about this right parallel to the wall of the rock entrance is side but the cave looks like this Okay, you are getting confused. Okay, this one. this is the mountain, and the cave is parallel to the mountain, right? Not inside. It is this way. So much more. Okay, you have to enter. After that, left lane. Okay, straight away. Yeah. Okay, that is what. Okay, so next one is parallel to the wall, multi-chambered with rectangular hall and oval-shaped cell. Okay, so rectangular hall. and at the end of it again there is a small cell okay which is over so much may i aapko yes so then ornamented facade is present present in barabar nagarjuni and sitamari hills sir so the barabar caves are present at three places you please highlight that barabar nagarjuni and sitamari hills and the most prominent chaityas are this sudhama and lomashrushi caves are chaityas sir okay just remember this sudhama and uh, Lomash Rishi caves. Only those two names you remember, sir. So the man Lomash Rishi caves. Then the other Viharas are present. Not important name, but just Gopi, Karna Chopra, and Vapia caves, which are simple single chambered and are probably Viharas. Chaitya is a sacred space where you sit and do meditation. Clear? Chaitya is a sacred space. Stupa is like the representative of the death of Buddha. Okay, that is also sacred. Okay, but its purpose is different. It is for worship, whereas Chaitya is for sitting and meditation. Okay, okay. So now just see the next one. Okay, this is the Barabar cave. Okay, so I have shown this. Then Kalagiri, Udayagiri. So we have the two-storied caves. Okay. Then after that, so this is the Udayagiri caves in Madhya Pradesh. This is the Varaha caves in Udayagiri, sir. Clear? Okay, so nothing much. Everything else is similar. Just these are the extra. This is not Kandagiri Udayagiri. This is a different Udayagiri in Madhya Pradesh. This is a Varaha Hindu cave. All right. Okay. So then next one is. This is what is that one? Ah, that's what. I was little confused. This is. This is. I'm sorry. This is. That's what. Okay. Suddenly I was confused. This. This is what is that one? Udayagiri, sir. Okay, that is uh, Udaygiri only. So the same staircase I have also visited. Okay, so this is that one. Okay, that is Odisha. By on top you write, sir. That is Odisha caves. 
sorry, I told that it is Varaha cave, this is the Odisan Udegiri cave. So then Dakkan, okay, you can see this Pandulini cave, they are not very important, this is Kanheri and this is Jogeshwari, just you see them sir, that is it, okay, but already I have mentioned all the caves, different rulers during whose time they have been constructed, I have mentioned, so you refer to that. Then uh, this is uh, one important cave which is called as Ravan Fadi cave sir, okay, you just put a star mark there, Ravan Fadi cave at Aihole sir. Okay, this cave is prominent primarily because it shows an image of Ravana lifting Mount Kailash sir. Okay, this is a very prominent sculpture of India, you know about this sir, Ravana at one point of time what he did is because he is a great Shiva Bhakta, he meditates for a lot of time below Mount Kailash, but Shiva does not come down. So, in his anger what he does is, he picks up the entire of, of Mount Kailasha on his hands and he lifts it up sir and he shakes it. Okay, so that image is shown in Ravanfadi cave sir, I will show that image later. Okay, this is a prominent cave of Aihole, see how it is looking, it is looking exactly like a temple right. Cave structure is coming close to a temple in Chalukyas of Badami sir. Okay, so it is coming close to a temple, this is the Badami cave, this is the Ajanta cave sir. Okay, this Chandrashala one, this is the Ajanta cave, enormous compositions, large structures sir. Okay, so this is present in uh, Maharashtra and this is the one which is called as the famous Ajanta caves sir. Okay, Ajanta caves is this, so in Ajanta caves this is one cave which has this boral vaulted structure, paintings of Ajanta caves I will show later. Okay, so then this is, uh, all of these are the Ajanta cave examples itself and this is the Kailasna temple which is a mountain carved into a temple in Dravidian style. This is the temple which has been constructed during the time of Rashtrakutas sir. Please write the name of the rulers. Rashtrakutas. Rashtrakutas constructed this temple, Kailasnath temple. This is the Kailasnath temple sir. But remember that this is built in Dravidian style, even though it is present in Dakkan, okay. So, in fact, these people were impressed by a Kailasna temple which is present at Kanchi and they wanted to recreate the same model in Elora. That is the reason why they constructed this in Dravidian style, sir. Okay. So, because of war, the Rashtrakutas once invaded and occupied Kanchipur. They felt very impressed by the Kailasna temple and they replicated the same, but by carving the temple from top to bottom. That is the reason why they adopted the Dravidian style, sir. Clear? So, then after this, Okay, this is Hayole, Badami and Patadakal. So, these caves, most of them are uh, Hindu and even though there are some Jain and Buddhist cave also, majority of them are Hindu sir and they have flat roof. Unlike the barrel vaulted roof, there is flat roof, you can see it, perceive it from here. It has a flat roofed cave and one important addition that these people did is, they started adding Dwarapalas at the center or the entrance of the cave sir. Can you see the Dwarapalas? Yes, so Dwarapalas they started doing. And here the most prominent caves are, one is this Ravanfadi cave, I talked about it already. The second one is Maisa Sura Mardini cave sir. So this is about Durga killing Maisa. Okay, Maisa is the buffalo headed evil right, so she kills him, so that is Maisa Sura Mardini. Then Harihara, I told about this cult right, okay, Shiva, Vishnu combined cult is Harihara cult. Then one unique thing is these people started decorating the ceiling, okay, just like today is, you know about this POP sir. Okay, plaster of Paris say usually the ceiling decoration is done right. So, similarly here also the stone has been carved in floral format and ceiling decoration started with these people sir. And later day it became a very important aspect of the Vesara architectural style. So much matter aapko? Ceiling pe decorate karna. Okay, so this is a ceiling decoration is one more important thing. Then they also had a cave which is dedicated to Ardhanathishwara and Dwarapalas at entrance. These are the important caves of these people sir. Clear? Okay, so there ceiling decoration in bracket you write sir, later carried forward to, later carried forward to Vesara architectural style, later carried forward to Vesara architectural style, Vesara, V-E-S-A-R-E, later carried forward to Vesara school of architecture. Now this is the next one sir, these are called as the Mandapas of Palavas. Mandapa again means cave sir, Mandapa means caves here, okay. So, and here also you can see the pillared portico, then along with that can you observe the Dwarapalas are also present inside, yes. So, these are all Hindu sir and they are present at Mahabalipuram mainly, okay, but there are other places also, but Mahabalipuram is the most important site for the cave Mandapas sir, clear. Then after this, uh, 
see this question sir Which are the oldest caves in India? Barabar are the oldest. Ashoka Maurya is the first to start cave structure. Okay. So, Badami are not the oldest. Then second statement, is that correct, sir? Correct. Who constructed the Ajivika temples? Ashoka Maurya. It is not Chandragupta Maurya who has constructed it, sir. Okay. Be careful while you are reading statements, how they are playing C. Then the third statement. At Elora, caves were made for different faiths. We told that they are Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, all faiths are there. So, three only is the answer for this question, sir. So, what is the So, what is the question? All right. Okay, now take down one more question, sir. Mains question. The rock cut architecture, the rock cut architecture represents the rock cut architecture represents one of the most important sources, represents one of the most important sources. of our knowledge of of our knowledge of early indian art and history source of our knowledge of early indian art and history will stop discuss is the question it has been asked for 150 words 10 marker question this is see what are they asking are they asking about the cave architecture? Hmm? What are they asking about? Are they asking you to explain about the cave architecture? Are they asking you to elaborate where the caves are present? What are they saying? Uh, so, how can you or what information you are going to get from the early Indian cave architecture, what information are you going to get from, uh, get about the Indian art and history is the question, sir. So, what information are you getting? First and foremost, the prominent religions of India, we are getting an information about. Uh, so, the sculptures reflect the cultural way of life. Then, uske saath saath mein, Indian art ka sirf baat kar lije, history ka baat kar lije. The heritage of their times. Okay, do the caves talk about history, sir? Just I am saying one question. So, where do you find caves speaking about history? Are inscriptions, sir? Haravela's inscription, where do we get from? We get from the cave. Yes or no? So, you might have studied about the Satavanas. In your ancient medieval history, there there is a very famous inscription called Nanagat inscription, and it also comes from a cave. Samaj mein aaya aap logon ko nahi? Yes. So history mein aapko kaisa information mil raha hai? Cave pe aapko inscriptions mil raha hai. Kharavela's inscription is present there. Shatavana inscription is present there. So these two things they show what? Okay, they show the history of the period. This is a 150 word question. Then what? Information is it giving about the art forms of India, sir? Art ke baare mein bole to, it is giving us information about the religion of the period. Then through sculpture, we are getting information about the dressing pattern, social life of people. Samaj lije. Then uske saath saath mein, okay, in art, the caves also have numerous paintings of their own. Yes, paintings also give us information. Then, uske saath saath mein, fourth one and most important one is, this shows the skill of Indian sculptor. Yes, yes sir. Huh. 
warfare rather than sculpture they give the it in inscription sir okay so you might be knowing about the chalukyas of badami king by the name of pulakesi so he has defeated harshavardhana and where do we get the information from uttar meruru is present in tamil nadu yaha pe usko hara ke waha pe ja ke dega kya kaha pe i hole inscription in the Aihole cave itself, we find the information about okay, Pulakesi defeating Harshavardhana. Is this history question or culture question, sir? It is mixed. First part is about culture, second part is about history. Samaj Mahara Apko, Aihole inscription, Karavela's inscription, then Uske Saat Saat Me, the Satavana Nanagat inscription. So, this way we get the information from multiple sources about the history also. And culture ke baare mein bhe, humko baut pata chalega. This way, cave architecture is something which is irreplaceable in Indian history. Bolke, conclusion karke, aapko chhod dena Are you following this? So this is like what ten marker question. Okay, 150 words you have to write. Simple. Is it clear? Okay, cave architecture dikte hi. Okay, so aap ye sab content. Okay, ye structure hota hai, aisa hota hai, aisa hota hai. <laughs> Drawings draw karna. Ye sab nahi karne ka. Because what they asked is more important, sir. Is it alright? Yes. So, this is the case with this. Now, we are done with the cave architecture, sir. The next structure for us is the stupa structure, sir. Okay, stupa structure. So, and we will study this also a little elaborately. Okay, just listen to me carefully first. This also has been asked as a mains question. Multiple number of prelims questions also have been asked on this particular section, sir. So, listen to me carefully first. Okay. Stupa is nothing but okay. Stupa's meaning is burial mounds. I told about it right. Stupa itself means burial mound, and this burial mound it comes from the tradition in India of burying the dead people. And this burying dead people it was a tradition which was present in India even before Buddhism, right? In fact, burying of the dead people is a tradition of the folk religious traditions of India, sir. It is a folk religious tradition and this folk religious tradition was adopted and this tradition it became in Buddhism the burial mound tradition it became the tradition of construction of stupas. Is it clear? And the first person to collect con construct the stupas at a large scale and in more number is whom? Ashoka Maurya. So according to tradition he has constructed 84,000. Okay, So even because the Buddhist traditions are usually exaggerating sir. So that is the reason why, let us suppose it is 8400, if you remove one zero also, then also it is a bigger number, yes or no. So eight, somewhere around, tradition says that he constructed 84,000 stupas and the stupas that he constructed, okay, were very crude structures, sir. And there was no entrance into the stupa, okay, and they were just centers of worship and pilgrimage, that is it. So much may aapko? Then after Ashoka Maurya, what happened is, the next period for stupa construction is, the major period which is called as the post Mauryan age and post Mauryan age saw the construction of many stupas in a standardized format sir and most of the stupas that we refer to today and which became the place of worship today all of them have been constructed during the post Mauryan period sir and most of the stupas which have been constructed in post Mauryan period they are just the elaborations of Ashoka stupas sir. Ashoka ne pehle thoda chota wala construct karke chala gaye uske baad mein later day rulers what they did is they further elaborated and reconstructed these stupas in a larger scale. That is the idea, sir. Is it clear? Ashoka Maurya also constructed a stupa at Dhauri, right? Yes. But the stupa that is remaining today, it is not the, I mean, the remains of the stupa, they are not the Ashoka Mauryan stupa, sir. Because during Ashoka Mauryan period, Buddha was never represented in human form. It is in the post Mauryan age, Buddha is represented in human form. And the stupa which is present in Dauli, it has numerous images of Buddha, right? Yes. So that is the reason why it is clear that it is a post Mauryan age stupa, sir. And in post Mauryan age, a standard form of stupa, it started developing, sir. So let us try to understand what this standard form of stupa is. What kind of elements are present in the stupa? Let us try to understand, sir. So when it comes to a stupa, usually every stupa has a mound and the mound of the stupa is usually called as anda. Because it's look, it looks like a egg, right? Yes. So that is the reason why the mound is called as anda. Very simple. Then first structure is simple. 
okay and and then below it what happens is the anda is constructed but the anda is usually constructed on a raised platform of its own which is cylindrical in shape and this cylindrical raised platform is usually called as medhisam what is medhi cylindrical raised platform is called as medhi on top of which the stupa is usually constructed samajh mein aapko then apart from medhi the second thing is there will be some gap between the stupa and the medhi sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko so there will be some gap okay so because the cylindrical base would be a little larger than the stupa that has been constructed so this creates a balcony here right yes so and this balcony is called as the pradakshina path sir okay i am not right drawing very beautifully but it is my diagram so i have to protect it okay so listen to this carefully so the next one is anda is done medhi is done so there is a pradakshina path here sir is it clear okay pradakshina path here where you can okay so do circumambulation around the stupa but you cannot enter into the stupa because it is a burial mound sir clear and on top of anda what they do is they construct a railing or okay this kind of railing they construct sir railing means you might have seen on buildings on top you have railings right railings are the things which help the people not to fall from the top right so those are the railings sir and similarly there will be a railing platform on top of the anda and this railing platform is called as armika sir okay armika is the platform which is present on the top of the anda and at the center of this armika there will be a okay large pillar sir and this pillar is called as dande dande is the pillar and all, to this dande usually what happens is there will be attached things which are called as chhatris samajh mein aa raha hai so dande is the pillar then there are chhatris the raised platform is called as harmike so then along with that there is a pradakshina path here yes and along with that okay in order to access this pradakshina path there will be a sopana sir okay sopana means what steps okay steps will be present in order to access the platform which are called as a sopa okay so this is a structure sir base structure but the thing is slowly with the time what happened the buddhists have started becoming very rich in india sir because of huge patronage from the kings so what they wanted to do is they wanted to segregate their sacred structure from the common people and in order to segregate the structure from the surroundings what they did is they started constructing a huge okay uh, railing around the stupa sir समझ में आपको रेलिंग मीन वॉट इट इज लाइक ए कॉम्पाउंड वॉल सर यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग कॉम्पाउंड वॉल अराउंड द बिल्डिंग बी कॉम्पाउंड वॉल राइट सिमिलरली कंस्ट्रक्टेड ए कॉम्पाउंड वॉल अराउंड देन अलॉग विद सम पीपल वर फॉलिंग ऑफ फ्रॉम द मे दी चिल्ड्रन पर्टिकुलरली सो हियर ऑल्सो द कंस्ट्रक्टेड ए कॉम्पाउंड वॉल सिमिलरली ऑन टॉप टू सो टू कॉम्पाउंड वॉल्स आर प्रेजेंट एंड दीज कॉम्पाउंड वॉल्स आर प्रेजेंट एंड आर कॉल्ड एज रेलिंग सर समझ में आपको सो एंड दिस रेलिंग इज कॉल्ड एज वेदिका इन पाली सर रेलिंग इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट वेदिका and this vedika it used to look this way sir just to understand this it had three parts to it okay so one is this this and this samajh mein aaya aapko yes okay it looks like a compound wall sir and compound wall it is called as vedika and vedika has a three parts to it sir okay the top slab which is present is usually called as what ushnisha is the top slab sir. top slab is called as ushnisha and the vertical pillars that are present they are called as stambha stambha are the vertical pillars whereas the horizontal pillars that are present they are called as suchi suchi okay suchi not suji okay suchi okay suchi stambha and ushnisha three parts are present samajh mein aa raha hai aapko ushnisha is the top part stambha is the vertical one horizontal pillar is called as suchi and all these three structure put together are called as what vedika sir is it clear but if you construct the vedika all around the stupa then what will happen there will not be any entrance yes that is the reason why this vedika even though it is present on all the four sides it has four gaps in between them here yeah, the places where the gaps in the vedika are present are those places are the entrance places okay and on the entrance places what these people used to do is they used to construct these kind of things which are called as the buddhist toranas sir usually three toranas used to be present so this way this is the torana 
Stamba is the vertical pillar. Suchi is the horizontal pillar. And the top one or horizontal bar is called as Suchi. Then on the top, whatever bar is there, that is called as Ushnisha. I will show the images, do not worry. Okay, I will show the images, do not worry about it. So, this is what is called as Vedika. So, these are the sub parts to the stupa, sir. TK, itna elaborately construction kardia. Okay, so now the thing is earlier it was just a burial mound, but you have increased the size of it enormously. Okay, so but the thing is when you construct such a large structure, automatically what will happen? You have constructed the Vedika, stupa, uh, stupa pe, anda is there. So, what happened is people started feeling like they should decorate these sections, sir. And with the, because of this intention of decoration itself, what happened is the entire structure of Vedika, Thorana, and sometimes even the anda on its top also is heavily ornamented with images of flowers, animals, human beings. Okay, and it also contains numerous stories of the Jataka tales of Buddhism. Okay, Sabka carving. Okay, this entire tale was narrated and it was shown on the uh, on the what is that Vedika okay Thoranape stories were depicted then this way the Buddhist message in order to communicate the Buddhist message these people started integrating all these folk stories onto the Ushnisha uh, onto the Vedika Thorana and along with that on the top of the Anda also they started carving these images on top sir and if an image is carved onto a wall usually it is called as a relief image sir. There are two kinds of sculpture. One is relief sculpture and the second one is called as 3D sculpture, sir. 3D sculpture means what? A full-fledged image on all directions, it is called as 3D image. But if you carve okay, an image on the wall, then it is usually called as relief sculpture, sir. So, much so there are two kinds of relief, deep relief, shallow relief. About that, I will talk later in sculpture. But relief sculpture means what? Which is carved on wall is called as relief sculpture, sir. And on this relief sculpture, usually what they used to do is they used to represent the Jataka tales. And the Jataka tales were earlier folk traditions of India. Yes. Okay. So, and after that, many Britishers have come into India, sir. Okay. When the Britishers have come into India, first they started excavating this Buddhist site. Okay. Before that itself, they read the Buddhist literature. Buddhist literature gives utmost importance to what, sir? Sannyasa, it gives to importance to. Okay. Buddha talked about Sannyasa. He was also a Sannyasi. But when the structures were excavated, on the structures, okay, or the on the holy stupas of Buddhism, what happened is numerous images of women in very attractive attire and very attractive poses pay, women's images are found on the stupa. The Britishers were shocked. Are you a religion? Religion is not a religion. If you have a religion, you can't have a religion. But if you have a religion, you can't have a religion. Women's images are there. Okay, what kind of this religion is this? Okay, there is a discord between the religious scriptures and the structures. Bolke, un logo ne ek statement bola, sir. But the thing is, this was not a discord. This was an attempt to integrate the local people okay, who are present nearby to the stupa and their gods into the Buddhist culture. Ke liye. What they did is they deliberately took over many goddesses from the local region and they integrated all of them onto the stupa, sir. The Britishers thought that okay, so this is in fact blasphemy. Okay, so in Western civilization, Christ, whatever he said, we followed it. Here, Buddha is saying you have to take sannyasa, but on images, what you are doing, you are giving all women images. Why? Because all these women are ekshis who are the chief deities of various rural cultures of India, and all of these images are integrated into the sculpture, sir. Okay, of these ekshis, one ekshi is very, very prominently represented in Buddhism, sir. Her name is Shalabanjika. Okay, this Shalabanjika, she is an emblem of fertility for the local people. She is a ekshi and her images are to be found in every Buddhist stupa. You find the images of Shalabanjika, sir. Because Shalabanjika is a mother goddess for the tribal traditions of India. The best way to take over any group into your religion is what? Take their gods. And taking their gods is what you have to give them an important place in your structure. And what is the important structure? You can't put something in the stupa. So, outside the stupa, you started using all these images as decorative elements so as to attract these groups also into your cultures. So, much may So, they did not stop here. Shalabanjika is one. Then the second important image is there is also an image of an Eksha god by the name of Manibhadra. And his images are also to be found everywhere in Buddhist Stupa, sir. 
This Manivandra is none other than later day in Hinduism he became Kuber. Who is Kuber, sir? God of wealth, money. So much matter. Okay, so if you don't understand Buddha's message of desireless life, at least your desires will be fulfilled by Manivandra. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one will come to a temple after becoming desireless. Usually they come to temple because of desires. Sir. That is the reason why they place the image of Manipadra also outside. Then along with that in India at that point of time, the Naga and Nagini cults are very, very famous. Sir. They were more popular than the cult of Buddhism, Jainism, Hinduism. Rather than all these cults, people used to believe in the cult of Naga and Nagini. Is it true or not, sir? So what happened is, Later day in Hinduism, every Hindu temple started having the images of Nagas. Yes, that is also a project of integration, sir. Before that, Buddhism also did the same thing and they showed numerous images of Nagas and Naginis also on their stupas in order to integrate these cultures into Buddhism, sir. And they also started showing images with, okay, Buddha standing and a seven-headed snake giving shade to him. This is also one famous image in the stupas, sir. It shows what, okay, your God also is ornamenting my God. Yes or no? Later day, the same tradition in Hinduism, it came out as Vishnu converting, okay, Sheshanaga as his Shayana. Okay, first Buddhists started this, sir. Then along with that, Krishna also suppressed the Naga cult in Kalyanaga image. You know about Kalyanaga? So, he dances on a seven-headed serpent and, uh, okay, undermines it. This is all nothing but, this is a struggle between different social groups in Indian society. Okay, and all of them are without okay making them small, you try to make them big by integrating them into your religion, sir. Okay, why did I discuss so much? Primarily because UPSC has asked a question on exactly the same thing, sir. So much, ma'am. And one more thing is this stupa also represents the very structure of the stupa represents the highest ideology of Buddhism, sir. Okay, the highest ideology of Buddhism is what? According to Buddha, life is a transient, right? Yes, transient means temporary. Okay, and transience is best represented by the symbol of a bubble, right? Okay, bubble is transient. That is the reason why the anda was made in the shape of a bubble, sir. Samajh mein aapko? Then, uske saath saath mein, what they did is, they also stated that the person who has understood, okay, this bubble nature of life or transience of life is resting beneath this. Okay, that is the reason why they have constructed stupas. So much man. And along with that, okay, they have chitri. What is the chitri representative of? Umbrella is representative of what in ancient India? Royalty. Chitri is a representation of royalty. It shows that Buddha he is born a Kshatriya. So much man. So this way chitri is also shown. So this way various symbolism are used in this thing, sir. So, Shalabanjika, Manibhadra, okay, Buddha with Naga, all these images I will show later in sculpture, okay, but first let us have a look at this section first. Is it alright? Did you understand the topic, sir? Yes? So, just have a look at this once. Okay, see this image, sir. Can you see Dharmika, okay, on top, then Chetri, then Anda, Medhi is there, Pradakshinapath 1 and 2, then Vedika, 2 Vedikas. Yes, then Torana. These are the essential elements of the stupa, sir. Clear? Yes. So now just see this. So features of a stupa. Stupa is a mound on the mortal remains of Buddha. Please write. On mortal remains of Buddha. Mortal remains of Buddha. Anda is the outside portion plastered. Okay, inside portion has rubble masonry. Please write this statement down, sir. Rubble, R-U-B-B-L-E. Inside portion has rubble, R-U-B-B-L-E, M-A-S-O-N-A-R-Y. Masonry. Okay, masonry means? Uh, rubble masonry means what? You just pour, okay, mud stones in order to give the solid structure in the inside. That is what is called as rubble masonry. Mason, Mason, Mason is the person who builds walls, right? That is called as masonry. Masonry means it is a technique to fill just dust and dirt into the inside of this stupas. That's it. Clear? So, this is the case. And the outside portion is plastered. Inside is bricks and rubble masonry. It is a solid structure, not hollow. 
there are railings which are called as vedikas and it contains ushnisha suchi and stamba see please draw the diagram and uh, represent them sir what is ushnisha what is suchi and what is stamba please draw them you remember the diagram okay so, but my diagram itself is okay these are the stambas okay so these are this suchi and this top bar that is present it is called as ushnisha and all of them put together is called as vedika simple okay pradakshina path i have shown torana or gateway okay so in fact it represents the exuberance of indian life through its sculptures please write down exuberance of indian life through its sculptures i'll tell about i'll show the images sir later exuberance of indian life is given torana or gateway so waha pe likh lijiye through sculpture through sculpture okay then there is medhi okay medhi is what the cylindrical structure platform okay so then after that sopana are the steps write the meanings there sir cylindrical platform is medhi sopana is steps and about this ayak platform i'll talk separately sir when i discuss amaravati i'll show it and i'll discuss no don't worry about it ayak platform ke bare mein then harmika dande and chhatri okay harmika means platform then dande means the pillar okay dande means pillar then chhatri means umbrella theek hai yes so then after that there is three kinds of stupas are there sir the first kind is called as datu garbha stupa second one is called as paribajaka stupa and the third is called as uddesika stupa so did i discuss about uddesika stupa i remember i have discussed about it what is uddesika stupa a uh, wish fulfilling stupa sir please write this stupa constructed after uddesika likh lijiye uddesika bagal mein stupa constructed after wish is fulfilled after wish is fulfilled after wish is fulfilled comma uh, that uh, datu garbha is there right datu garbha are the supas with buddha's relics sir is right it with buddha's relic relic means body parts sir with buddha's relic remains remains the meaning is relic is remain datu garbha are uh, buddha's relic supas then along with that there is the third kind of stupa sir third kind of stupa is called as what sir paribajaka stupa okay constructed after the death of a buddhist monk constructed after the death of a buddhist monk then they are called as paribajaka stupa okay paribajaka means monk sir remember uh, shown one question also on paribajaka paribajaka stupa is uh, stupa constructed on his remains paribajaka means sanyasi samajh mein aaya aapko Yes, Paribajaka Stupa built on the remains of Buddhist monks. Types of stupas, three types of stupas are there. Here, okay, so we have some crude remains of some Ashoka stupas, sir. One is present at Sanchi, second one is present at uh, this place Sarnath, okay, and the third one is present at Takshila. And Sarnath and Takshila stupa, both of them are called as Dharma Rajika stupas, sir. this the names of those stupas and both of them are ashokan stupas but nothing much remains sir it's just like a mound that's it okay nothing remains from here okay not very important from the exam point of view then post morian age during the sunga period we see the construction of the main sanch stupa sir okay which is uh, uh, the largest stupa in india today is the sanch stupa okay so that is constructed during the time of sunga sir okay so you remember pushyamitra sunga So Pushyamitra Sunga ke period pe a Sanchi Stupa construction hua sir. Then after that there is Amaravati Stupa. Okay, this is also one major stupa of India. But unfortunately, what happened is during British colonial time, I'll tell you, many Britishers used to come to India, right? And when they were going back to their country, they wanted to take some or the other relic from India or one or the other um, archaeological uh, archaeological findings of India to their country. okay so as their achievement of india sir samajh lijiye so what used to happen many british administrators used to come to india 
some of them are fascinated by hunting so they used to kill tigers and they used to take their skin or bones to britain okay this is fine because the tigers can procreate but the second kind of people are more dangerous sir these people what they did is they started thinking that rather than taking tiger let's take some historical or archaeological finding from india okay they used to collect some archaeological findings and they used to carry them to great britain sir and in this way the most plundered okay site of india is amravati where almost an entire stupa was found but it was broken down deliberately into various parts and each part was carried away by a different britisher sir samajh mein aaya that is the reason why today amravati stupa it is not i mean its exact uh, how it used to look like we don't know sir most of the remains of the amravati stupa they are not present in india they are present in british museum sir and amravati stupa is very very prominent primarily because the the entire stupa except for the interior parts are made of marble the vedikas were made of marble okay the anda was made of marble every part of this stupa was made of marble and it has been carried away to british museum sir samajh mein aaya aapko so amravati stupa ke bagal mein you write marble stupa marble stupa marble stupa but has been carried away to great britain marble stupa but has been carried away to great britain okay so then kushanas also constructed a stupa at takshila but not nothing of it remains sir it's a very very poor stupa post mauryan period then after the post mauryan period during guptan period and after there were three important stupas sir one is sarnath second is nalanda and the third is bodhgaya sir okay three stupas are present about bodhgaya story i'll tell separately so sarnath nalanda and bodhgaya stupa. Okay, and Sarnath's uniqueness is it is a completely cylindrical stupa, sir. It doesn't have an anda. Okay, anda is very small. The platform is very large. That is the reason why it is called a cylindrical stupa. Whereas Nalanda stupa is a pyramidal stupa, not the standard format of stupa, sir. Is it clear? And the Bodh Gaya stupa is a temple form of stupa. Okay, it is a temple form of stupa. Okay, I'll show the images of these things, sir. Okay, so this is the Amravati stupa. Okay. I told you about the Ayak platform, right? Okay, just see this, sir. The structure, this is an artistic recreation of the Amravati stupa, sir. Okay, based on the evidence, Indians got this super reconstructed, but a very miniature size, not large size, sir. Okay, this miniature size stupa, it has some unique elements. Can you see the anda being ornamented in floral pattern? Yes. Then along with that, the Vedika, okay, and the Toranas, all of them are built in, what, sir? marble complete marble fully carved marble sir very beautiful images okay but unfortunately they are lost primarily because marble lends itself to carve very easily right marble is a soft stone so much matter aapko marble is a soft stone it lends itself for carving very easily so very beautiful carvings are present sir then the other important thing for only the avaravati stupas is can you see this kind of projection here nearby to the entrance way See, Vedika is present, Torana is present, but there is a projection here. Here also it is not visible, but this is the projection, sir. And this projection of Amravati stupa is called as Ayak platform, sir. So much may aapko, Ayak platform, where the stupa is present this way, there will be a short projection to the front, and on top of it, there is one, okay, so this one kind of uh, sculpture is made, not sculpture, sir. Pillar is erected, this is called as Ayak platform. Okay, and later day, this Ayak platform tradition became essential for Hinduism, wherein in front of the temple, okay, we started erecting this kind of pillars which are called as Garuda Dvaja, uh, Garuda Stamba, Garuda Dvaja, okay, so all of these are what, they are an emanation of this Ayak platform tradition in Buddhism, sir. Because Tupas started in India first before temples. Samaj mein aapko? Yes, this is the Ayak platform, sir. Now, I have given a brief explanation after that. See Satavanas, this, this Chaitya is a Maha Chaitya and Nagarjuna Kondo also had some stupas of its own. It had ornamented anda, ayak platform and they are huge in size. Sir. Okay, this was supposed to be larger than the Sanchi stupa but we don't have it. Alright, so then after this, the next one is Nalanda sir. I will just show you the image of Nalanda stupa sir. This is the Nalanda stupa. Okay, so uh, this image does not show it properly. Eh? This is the Nalanda Stupa, sir. Are you able to see it? Okay, so they have 
changed the rules of stupa construction completely and they made it in the form of a pyramid which can be accessible through a staircase which is very long staircase say it is accessible sir. okay and one more thing is in the bengal region you don't find any stone right because it is all delta region that is the reason why these people what they used to do is they used to construct the entire building with the bricks made of clay sir. okay clay bricks that is the reason why this characteristic red color so much may I? yes so now this is one of the most prominent one nalanda and here in nalanda stupa okay the central stupa has buddha's relic sir but apart from this there is one more prominent structure in uh, this stupa which is called as sariputra stupa sir okay. this is the sariputra stupa the cliche okay this is the sariputra stupa you know about sariputra Sariputra is a very famous monk of Buddhism, okay, who uh, was converted into Buddhism by uh, Buddha himself. He belonged to a very wealthy merchant family, sir. Okay, and there is a very famous uh, story which is called as a Sariputra Prakarana. And this Sariputra Prakarana is considered to be the first drama of India, sir. Okay, the first drama of India is Sariputra Prakarana. That is the story of Sariputra's conversion into Buddhism. From a wealthy merchant, he became a Buddhist, and the story of this conversion is called as Sariputra Prakarana, and it is the first drama of India, and it has been written by a person by the name of Ashwa Gosha. That is the significance of this Sariputra Prakarana, sir. I think you might have studied about it during the Kanishkan time. This has been written in Sanskrit language, sir. Samajliji. Then along with that, because there is no stone, only bricks-based construction, you can't carve anything. That is the reason why the Nalanda Vihara, for the sake of sculpture, what it does is it makes the sculpture on terracotta plaques. Okay, terracotta plaques means what? Okay, they take a, uh, they create a terracotta. Uh, have you seen any terracotta sculptures at any point of time, sir? Okay, small gods' images are also made with terracotta. Huh? China, no, Chinas are porcelain. Ah, terracotta image. Yes, yes. That army is terracotta army, sir. Yes, yes. That is it. Rather than that, you might have seen in India also some places, okay, there is a tradition of handicrafts where huge horses are made with terracotta. Uh, gray, I mean, red color horses are seen. Have you seen this? Okay, what are they called? Terracotta horses only they are called as, sir. So, this way, in Bengal also, in Nalanda University, because of the absence of rock, in Nalanda University, all the sculpture is terracotta sculpture, sir. Then along with that, Nalanda, apart from being a stupa, it is also a Mahavihara, sir. Okay, Mahavihara means a huge vihara and it had a compound wall around it. Then along with that, it had numerous cells, small chambers were present for the sake of residence of the monks, sir. Okay, and the foundation for the construction of the Nalanda Mahavihara, it has been laid by a person by the name of Kumara Gupta, sir. Kumara Gupta is the one who laid the foundation for construction of Nalanda Mahavihara. But it became much more popular during the time of Palas of Bengal, sir. Okay, because the Palas of Bengal are great part, patterns of Buddhism. They supported this uh, uh, Vajrayana Buddhism. And Nalanda Mahavihara, it has a very important role during the Palas of Bihar. And during this period only, it had students from all the countries or many countries of Southeast Asia and uh, China. They used to come here. They used to stay here, study here. And in Nalanda Mahavihara, the unique thing is, it is not only a center of Buddhism, sir. The various schools of Buddhism are studied. Then along with that, the other religions of the world also are studied in Nalanda Mahavihara, sir. Then along with that, there is also a secular department in Nalanda Mahavihara. And the secular department is also very popular. And in fact, one famous Chinese pilgrim to India by the name of Huan San, he stayed at the Nalanda University for 11 years, sir. And he gives a detailed description of the Nalanda Mahavihara. Then along with that, one more Chinese traveler was there who visited and stayed at Nalanda Mahavihara. His name is Eid Singh. Okay, Eid Singh is the person, he is the third Chinese tra traveler. And during Fahian's time, is Nalanda Mahavihara present, sir? Did Fahian stay here? Why? It was constructed during the time of Kumara Gupta. Whereas Fahian came to India during the time of Chandragupta II, who is Kumaragupta's father. 
समझ लीजिए इट वॉज नॉट कंस्ट्रक्टेड वेन फाहियान केम टू इंडिया आफ्टर हिम इट वॉज कंस्ट्रक्टेड सर एंड दिस यूनिवर्सिटी हैड ओके ए वेरी वेरी टफ एंट्रेंस एग्जामिनेशन विच यूज टू बी कंडक्टेड रियली एट द एंट्रेंस ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी सर ओके सो दैट इज हाउ द नेम कम्स ओके एंट्रेंस पे ही ओके वॉट एपन्स इज थ्री ग्रेट स्कॉलर्स विल कम एंड एनी पर्सन हू वॉन्ट्स टू एंटर इन टू द यूनिवर्सिटी दे पुट अक्रॉस क्वेश्चन टू हिम Only if he is able to answer these questions, then they will be permitted into the university. That is a real entrance examination, sir. <laughs> okay, so unlike today, so that was a real entrance examination which was written. Okay, just before the entrance itself, it is written. This is the story of Nalanda University. Okay, then along with that, the Nalanda University also had the world's largest library at that point of time. So, and this uh, library is called as Dharm Ganj. It is called as. Sir. Okay, Darmanganj is the library's name, and it had three parts to it. Okay, Ratna, Ranjani, Ratnodhani. So this way there are many names. So, but the largest university, uh, sorry, library of the world was present here, and the library was destroyed, and the Nalanda Mahavira was also destroyed by whom, sir? Bhaktiyar Khilji is the person who, in fact, burned down the entire library, and he destroyed most of the literature which is present there. So this is the story of the Nalanda Mahavira, sir. is it clear not just from architecture point of view from history point of view also nalanda mahavira is very prominent sir clear okay so now let's have a look at the handout for this section first okay so nalanda mahavira primarily we get the information from the record of one sang and eat sing please write his name also i dash t s i n g eat sing i dash T S I N G Itsi. Okay, this is the third Chinese traveler to India after Huan Fan, and this person is Itsi. Itsi. Okay, so it is a Mahavihara, and foundation is laid by Kumara Gupta I, okay, who is a Gupta ruler in 5th century AD, and additions by later monarchs of Pala dynasty. Sir, please write it. Additions were made by later rulers of Pala, Pala dynasty. And it is destroyed by Bhakti Arkilji, sir. It is destroyed by Bhakti Arkilji. Okay, so he is. So which dynasty time was Bhakti Arkilji present, sir? So Delhi Sultanate me there are dynasties, right? Like slaves, Khiljis were there. Then after that there is Tughlaq. So during which dynasties times time Bhakti Arkilji invaded Nalanda University, sir? During during slave dynasty, sir. okay because he is himself a soldier of qutubuddin aibak but after the death of qutubuddin aibak this person with a small army he became independent okay and he started marching towards eastern part of india and he is the one who destroyed the nalanda university sir he was present during slave dynasty you can write in bracket slave dynasty because khilji naam dekh ke prelims mein khilji khilji bol ke not say khiljis okay so they are present part of slave dynasty evidence of all school, three schools of buddhism secular subjects and other religions too also are studied and it has a huge pyramidal platform stupa okay so then after that you write and sariputra stupa write it sir sariputra s a r i is it there okay so last one it contains sariputra stupa okay there you write sir sariputra is an early convert into buddhism Sariputra is an early convert into Buddhism, and early convert into Buddhism, and his story, his story became the first Sanskrit drama. Became the first Sanskrit drama. Sariputra Prakaran, first Sanskrit drama. Sariputra Prakaran. Sariputra Prakaran. P R A K A R A N E. Sorry, Putra Prakarana, written by Ashwagosha. Written by Ashwagosh. Okay, or Ashwagosha. He is the one who has written this. So this is the story of Sorry, Putra Prakarana. Clear? Then after this, the next one is uh, Great Library at Nalanda, and it is named as Dharma Ganj, and it has three parts to it: Ratna Sagara, Ratna Odhani, and Ratna Ranjaka. So these are the three parts to this uh, uh, library, sir. clear okay so there you write sir the mahavihara the mahavihara also has a residence for also has a residence for 
residence for residence means in bracket you write vihara vihara for hundreds of students for hundreds of students residence for hundreds of students who are accommodated in single chambered cells who are accommodated in single chambered c h a m b r d single chambered cells c l l s single chambered cells clear understand this sir okay single chambered cells may or rahte the then apart from this i think did i tell anything else about the nalanda mahavihara okay so there you write one statement it is a major center of tantric buddhism it is a major center of tantric buddhism it is a major center of tantric buddhism tantric buddhism full stop it has been constructed with terracotta bricks it has been constructed with terracotta bricks and the sculpture the sculpture is also made of is also made of terracotta t e r r a c o t a this is terracotta okay terracotta sculpture sculpture is also made of terracotta sir okay so this is the story of the nalanda mahavihara sir okay so then after that okay this is the starnath stupa can you see the cylindrical stupa sir yes so does it follow the standard rules no so sarnath stupa is this it is a huge structure sir okay so but it looks like as if the anda is at the bottom and or the anda itself becomes a cylindrical uh, cylindrical shaped structure sir clear so now the last one is with respect to this temple which is called as the mahabodhi temple sir okay so where is it present bihar mein where which place uh, bodh gaya okay bodh gaya is the place where it is constructed in order to commemorate the place where buddha has attained his enlightenment sir okay in fact the bodhi tree is also present in uh, the premises of this temple where buddha he got his enlightenment the tree is also present there okay but that tree is unfortunately not the original tree sir primarily because in medieval time okay so there was a ruler of bengal by the name of shashanka who was a staunch shaivite he has destroyed the tree but fortunately okay the original trees sapling it was sent from india to sri lanka by ashoka maurya sir okay anradhapura it has the original tree sapling and in india later it this sample was brought back to india and it has been replanted in india sir okay so this is the story of the mahabodhi temple and mahabodhi tree sir now if you look at this temple so does it follow any rules of buddhist structure sir okay it looks like a hindu temple yes it looks like a hindu temple and the construction of this structure it was started by ashoka sir okay but what kind of structure ashoka built we don't know sir because later day it has been completely reformed by the palas sir and it is a completely brick built structure and this structure it has a uniqueness primarily because even though it looks like a hindu temple it doesn't follow either the rules of nagara or dravida sir okay there are two prominent schools nagara style dravidian style does it look like any odisha temple sir odisha temples are nagara style does it look like any south indian temple it doesn't look like that too primarily because it has a shape which is called as a pyramidical shape sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko it's a proper pyramidical shape it has okay so proper pyramidical shape it has and this shape is usually called as a truncated pyramid shape wherein the size of the structure decreases as you go up sir if this is there then it is called as a truncation and this is a truncated pyramid structure and the uniqueness is on the top of this truncated pyramid structure you have a anda sir so in hindu temple we have avalok and kalash right so but in this buddhist temple there is a anda kind of structure on top and this structure is a similar to some temples which have been constructed in southeast asia which are called as pagoda structures sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko pagoda structure se bahut similarity hai isko so later day because of multiple number of influences this structure has been built and the uniqueness about this structure one more uniqueness is whatever central structure is there an exact replica of this is present on the four corners of the temples 
so you are able to see it then along with that okay this uh, pyramidal shape is there this provides for a lot of space for sculpture sir that is the reason why at every level in this temple there are multiple numbers of images of buddhas bodhisattvas and other important figures of buddhism their sculptures are present throughout the temple and it looks like a carved temple from bottom to top sir is it clear and this temple okay it also has a upraised platform sir and this upraised platform it is present beneath the bodhi tree and this platform has been constructed by ashoka maurya himself in order to commemorate the place where buddha has attained his moksha or enlightenment samajh mein aa raha hai aapko so this is the story of the mahabodhi temple sir just have a look at the slide for this section too okay first shrine is constructed by ashoka okay first shrine is constructed by ashoka and vedika added by the post morgan age so please cut it sir post vedika is also added by ashoka sir vedika means platform it's not post morgan vedika is also done by ashoka himself vedika is also done by ashoka maurya himself vedika means platform platform beneath bodhi tree platform beneath bodhi tree platform beneath bodhi tree and the later additions were done by the palas clear so now it is a brick temple it is neither dravida nor nagara okay there you right it follows the pagoda tradition of southeast asia it follows the pagoda p a g o d a pagoda tradition of southeast asia okay it is narrow like nagara temple but rises without curving like dravidian temples okay there is no curvings on the side right but for a nagara temple you have curving there is no curving for this okay so and it is called as a stepped truncated pyramid shape and there is a small hemispherical stupa on top sir samajh mein aaya aapko so small hemispherical stupa on top mahadev bodhi temple is constructed of brick and is one of the oldest brick structures to have survived in eastern india sir it is one of the oldest brick structures and it has a pyramidical shikara okay that is tower comprises several several layers of niche what is the meaning of niche have ever heard this term niche is environment done for you no uh environment may there is this concept called niche niche is a specific functional place is called as niche sir please write there niche means a specific place useful for specific place useful for a specific function a specific place useful for a specific function is called niche sir niche this has been asked as a upsc prelims question also but in environment but this is a english word sir niche means is a english word niche is a specific place for specific function is called as function is called as niche clear now the next one is uh, niches arch motifs and fine engravings are present four towers each identical to its central counterpart but smaller in size and topped with an umbrella like dome adorn the corners of the two story structure so this is the mahabodhi temple for us sir samajh mein aaya aapko yes so this is the case with the stupa architecture so take down one question sir take down one question here early buddhist stupa art early buddhist stupa art while depicting while depicting folk motifs while depicting folk motifs and narratives folk motifs and narratives successfully expounds folk motifs and narratives successfully expounds e x p o u n d s expounds buddhist ideals successfully expounds buddhist ideals full stop elucidate is the question sir stop elucidate see this question questions answer even though i have dictated the question it would be better for us to write the answer after sculpture Okay, so please don't attempt this question. Just I wanted to give a sample of this. 
So sculpture I will discuss sir, then you will understand the link between the folk motifs and Buddhist ideals sir. Samaj mein aapko? Yes, so this is a very very good question that has been asked. See, are they asking any uh, static question or application oriented question sir? They are asking application oriented question sir. Okay, this is a significant sir. They are not asking about stupa, kaisa rahega, kaisa dikhega stupa, ye sab nahi puch rahe. Is it clear? Okay, so then I will show one small question. There is one more question, sir. One more question is there. Just a second, because this question I did not find. Uh, This is 2023, this year prelims question. One is correct. Is see just now I have told. Is Thupa Buddhist in origin, sir? It first started with the tradition of burial mound. It is a folk tradition. I have told just today. Did I not tell, sir? I told you that Thupa is what? It is a emanation of the burial tradition of India, which is originally a folk tradition. See, the thing is. I will tell you one simple thing. So, what used to happen is, usually the burial mound used to look, used to be constructed very largely, sir. And that itself is called as stupa. Burial mound's name itself is stupa. Later it became bigger, that's it. See, stupa is not Buddhist in origin. It is folk tradition of India. I started my discussion also when discussing about stupa with the same statement. I told it very clearly. It is a folk in origin, sir. The very structure of stupa is folk in origin. Then the second statement, stupa was a generally a re repository of relics. Now you are questioning yourself. That is correct. <laughs> second statement is correct. Third statement, stupa was a votive and commemorative center. Stupa is not commemorative. What is the meaning of Udeshika stupa? To commemorate fulfillment of your desire itself it is a commemorative center okay two and three is the answer for this question sir okay so see the problem is this okay so how many of them are correct they did not say which statements are correct one only two only three only where you can't use even elimination techniques sir the answer for this question is okay two only are correct only two are correct Okay, I don't know what this institute has given as an answer. Okay, they also have given only two. Okay, but only two is the answer, sir. Samaj lije, this is important, sir. Okay, this is important. Now, okay, just in the next 10 minutes, I will just explain some basic concepts, sir. And after that, we can uh, easily pick it up tomorrow morning. So, that is the reason why I need to explain some, okay, so early temple structures of India and Hindu architectural style. I will give the basics first, sir. Just like how I have discussed the basics of caves, how I discussed the basics of 
uh, stupa here also i'll discuss some basic elements of hindu construction style sir so there are some essential elements of hindu construction style see whenever you see a hindu construction style okay, what are the essential elements of a hindu style sir you should tell me you have visited so many temples what do you see essentially in a hindu temple huh? what Garbha Griha, okay, oh, okay. Rather than, okay, so the parts of the temple, okay, I am asking, I am asking not the sub parts, sir, okay, but the elements of architecture, I am asking. See, tower you see, okay, tower, rather than using the term tower, uh, Shikara, because Shikara is present in North Indian temple, South Indian may, there is Vimana, there is different thing. So, but what you see is in both of them, one of the essential part of a temple is tower. Tower should exist for a temple site. Then apart from this, huh? see most of the Hindu construction styles, okay, for them, one essential aspect is pillar site. Yes, except for some Odisan temples which have been constructed without pillars. If you say a Hindu temple, automatically the first thing that comes to your mind is a pillar, sir. Okay, and pillars, even though they obstruct the line, line of vision. Did I tell about this, sir? Okay, pillars, if there are many pillars, what happens is it will obstruct the line of vision. Yes, so even then, even though it is a problem, but Hindu construction style, you cannot imagine without a pillar, sir. This is the second essential aspect. Then the third essential aspect of a Hindu construction style is, the Hindu construction style should definitely have a beam. Okay, beam means, this is the beam, right? Okay, this is also beam, that is the pillar. Yes, okay, so the beam, pillar and tower, three aspects. Then apart from this, the fourth essential aspect of a Hindu construction style is, we have a structure which is called as lintel, sir. What is a lintel? Ah, lintel, okay, so that is entrance ke upar, jo beam rata hai, usko lintel bolte hai. Okay, for every temple at the entrance, you see a huge lintel. Did you see? Just above the door, you have a stone slab which holds the weight of the structure above it. Samaj aapko? Lintel. Okay, so then after lintel, the fifth essential aspect of a temple construction style or temple A is okay, tower, pillar, beam, lintel. Then the next one is there is a technique okay, for construction of Hindu structures, and this technique is called as corbelling structures. Corbelling, the word which is used for this is corbelling. Corbelling means what? It is a very simple thing, sir. Wherein in Hindu style, in order to construct towers, okay, or in order to construct any huge structure, usually the technique which is used is they are going to place the stones one over the other, this way in order to finally construct a tower. So, this technique of construction is called as corbelling structure and corbelling means placing the stones one over the other in a staggered fashion in order to create a tower is called as corbelling. Sir. Is it clear? So, this is the next important element in the Hindu construction style is corbelling. Then, apart from corbelling, one more important essential aspect of a temple is Usually, in Hindu temples, you do not find any strong mortar agent in order to bind the stones together, sir. Okay, primarily because in India, before the Islamic invasion, we never used lime as a mortar, sir. Samaj liji. Lime as a mortar. Mortar means binding agent. Uh, chuna. So, what we used to do is, before the Islamic invasion over India, we used to use a okay, mud plaster or stone dust for binding, sir. So much matter, that is the reason why if you go to any Hindu structure, Hindu fort, sir, usually the forts will have blocks placed one on top of another without any cementing agent in between, sir. Yes, so there is no cementing agent, only clay and stone dust is used as cementing agent, which is very weak cementing agent, sir. Is it clear? And this is the reason why in Hindu structures, you always will have the requirement of pillars, sir. Because if there is no cementing agent, how will you hold the weight of the top structure? 
uh, you keep regularly pillars at every place. Now, because we have cement, we can construct a structure which is so large without any cementing agent, sir. Sorry, without any pillar. Okay, but if you increase further the size, the thing is you cannot construct a flat roofed structure without a pillar intervening, sir. Because this classroom is small, you could have constructed. But if the structure becomes big, automatically pillars will come in between because in order to hold the weight of the structure, sir. Is it clear? And no cementing agent at that point of time. So that is the reason why regular interval space pillars dalna shuru kiya, sir. Is it clear? So these are some six and uh, is there any other element of Hindu te temple style? Huh? Mandap, uh, okay. So you are talking about structures. So I will explain the structures too, sir. So essential elements are these. By using these elements, uh, what we have done is we have constructed multiple structures in the temple complex, sir. And of the structures, as he has pointed out, one important structure for every temple in India is the Garbhagriha, right? Yes. Then apart from Garbhagriha, the second important structure for any temple complex is, okay, so after Garbhagriha, we have the structures which are called as mandaps, right? Or mandapas, they are called as, yeah, mandapas are, okay, usually, uh, the, uh, I mean, Garbhagriha has the chief deity and mandapas are the places where usually the food is cooked. Mandapas are the places where the dance performances are usually performed. So, public congregations are performed, songs okay, and singing, all these things happen in Mandapas. Sir. Then apart from Mandapas, the third structure which is important for a temple complex in India is, the temple should have a wall which is called as Prakara walls. Okay, Prakara wall. Okay, particularly in South Indian temples, if we find this structure Prakara wall, that is the temp entire temple complex is surrounded by a large compound, very high in height. So, that is what is called as Prakara sir. Then the third important element for a Hindu temple is, uh, understand this, so there is a mandapa, there is Garbhagriha, two structures are there. Now the thing is, there is a need to connect these two structures sir. And the connector between Garbhagriha and mandapa is usually called as Antrala sir. Okay, Antrala, okay, Antrala is, you might have seen in temple sir. See, when you are passing from Mandapa into the Garbhagriha for Darshan, you will pass through a very narrow passageway. Yes or no, sir? Okay, so even in Jagannath Puri temple also we have this narrow passageway. And if you look at the top of the narrow passageway, usually it will have a barrel roof, sir. Okay, Garbhagriha has, a roof is tower. Mandapa roof is again one more tower. But in between there will be Antrala. And in Antrala, if you look on top, you will find a same roof as we have seen in Ajanta caves on top, sir. That is barrel roof. So, what are you talking about? Yes. So, this is the structure, sir. These are the structures which are constructed with the, the Hindu temple. Then along with that, some temples in South India, they have Pushkarani on the outside. Okay, Pushkarani is the sacred tank. And when there is okay, so much of Prakara wall, naturally what will have? You will have some entrance gateways. Some temples for Prakara wall, they have entrance gates, gateways which have Toranas to them, sir. Have you visited Lingaraj temple? Lingaraj temple, Prakara wall, it has, okay, Pushkarini, it has, Mandapas, it has, Garbhagriha, it has, Towers, it has. Then, uske saath saath mein, at the entrance of the Prakara wall, you find a huge Torana, sir. Torana is just like the Buddhist Torana. Buddhist Torana has three levels. Hindu Torana has single line, sir. Samaj mein aapko? So, that is Torana structure. For Odisha temples, we find Torana, but in south, at the same place of entrance, we find one more large tower. Sir. The large tower which is present at the entrance gates is called as Gopra, okay? whereas the inside structure is called as Shikara in south. Whereas in Nagara style or in North Indian style, the, the main shrine is called as what? Shikara. The okay, main shrine is called as Shikara. In south, it is called Viman. And there is also a Gopura in south, but in north, particularly in Odisha, we find the Thorana around the or at the entrance gateway of the Prakara wall, sir. So, did you understand the basic elements of temple construction style, sir? Yes? Okay, so that is it. I will call it a day for today, sir. So, tomorrow we will continue the class again. Uh, I do not want any of you to be carried in stretcher outside the class. Okay. <laughs> So anyhow, you people are already half dead. Okay, so I don't want to completely kill you. Okay, so <laughs> that is the reason. Okay, so.
we'll wind up the class sir for now so tomorrow we'll meet again so we'll meet at 8 tomorrow we'll finish off architecture sir that is my plan for tomorrow anyhow i want to finish off architecture i don't want to miss anything okay so i'll correct so i'll finish it off sir tomorrow architecture so even if it takes a little bit extra time also please be mentally prepared for it we'll finish off architecture all right Section. Which one? I made a section of it. I thought it will be more like uh, attractive cultural economy. Mm -hmm. But you have to give examples. Okay, you do not write an example for this. You are writing well, but uh, please write examples. So you have to write a bigger answer. You have to write bigger. This is too small. So now this is a uh, I think two fifty word question. Temple wala. This is a fifteen marker. Two fifty words. So two fifty words means you have to start here and finish here. Three page. Okay, rule is three page. So you have to write political dimension. Examples elaborate a little bit. So that is how you have to write. Okay. This is also a 15 marker question, three page answer. Okay. So Chetana Mahaprabhu introduced deeply emotional. I got even influence from this room. Okay. Okay. It was not my own. No problem, no problem. You see and write also, but write bigger answer. Okay. With the advantage of Chetana Mahaprabhu, so the order must be.